Hi everyone, and welcome to Shavlik Patch. My name is Joe Andert, and I'm a technical communicator with Shavlik. In this video, I will be showing you how to edit the metadata in your updates. So, let's get started. Shavlik Patch provides you with the ability to edit individual updates in the Shavlik Patch catalog. There are several reasons you might want to edit an update. For example, you might want to add a command line switch, modify the title of an update, or perhaps edit the rules that specify if an update is installed. In general, there are two types of modifications that can be made to an update. Modifications to an update's metadata and modifications to an update's installation file. In this video, I will explain how to modify an update's metadata. Information on how to modify an update's installation file is provided in a separate video. Updates can be edited from either the Shavlik patch list or the published third-party updates list. Updates in the Shavlik patch list may or may not have already been published. When accessing an update from this location, the starting point for the update will always be the current catalog update. If an update has been edited with metadata changes only and published, you will be notified and those edits will not appear in the editor. When using the editor to open an update in the published third-party updates list, any previous edits you may have applied will be available. If you attempt to edit an update that has been superseded by another published update, you will get an error message and the editor will not open. For this demo, I will edit an update contained in the Shavlik patch list. To access the update editor, you select the desired update and then click Edit. There are several tabs along the left side of the dialog that allow you to edit various aspects of the update. All but the last tab are used for making modifications to an update's metadata and I will talk about that last tab in a separate video. Let's start with the Binary File tab. The top portion of this tab displays static information about the binary file that cannot be changed. The Verify Download button will download the update from the specified URL and it will verify that the digest in the update matches the digest in the metadata. Let's give it a try. In this case, the file was downloaded without any problems. By default, the update is downloaded to a temporary location and then deleted after the digest is checked. If you specified a local source folder on the settings dialog, however, the update will instead be downloaded to that location and it will not need to be downloaded again when the update is published. The command line box enables you to define one or more custom switches to use when the update is installed. For example, you might add a switch that disables auto update or, as shown here, a switch that performs a silent install. Finally, the return code boxes enable you to specify unique integer codes that are returned when an update is successfully installed or is installed but requires a reboot. The Localized Description tab enables you to view and modify the title and description text that is provided for each update. You can provide unique text for any of the supported languages. For example, let's demonstrate this by quickly adding unique text for a Portuguese environment. The Information tab enables you to view some general information about the update, and you can also modify a number of items. For example, you can modify the URLs that provide additional information and assistance with the update. You can assign a new severity level, 
and you can modify a couple of informational fields. Here's how easy it is to change any of these fields. The Prerequisites tab enables you to specify requirements that must be met in order for an update to be considered installable. The Available Detectoids list contains the rules that are available for selection. There are two types of detectoids. CPU architecture detectoids specify the computer architecture that is required, and OS language detectoids specify the operating system language that is required on the target machine. To add one or more prerequisites, you simply select the desired detectoids and then click Add Prerequisite. For example, if you want to require that the update can only be installed on 64-bit computers that contain either an English or Portuguese operating system, here's how you do it. I'll actually start by defining two different groups of prerequisites, one for each detectoid type. I'll now add a second language prereq to the operating system language group. In order for the prerequisites to be met, at least one of the items in each group must be satisfied. The Superseded Updates tab enables you to specify which updates are superseded by this update. The Available Software Updates list contains all updates in the Shavlik Patch catalog as well as published updates previously created by the update editor. For this example, let's say that the six prior FileZilla updates are all superseded by the update I am currently editing. Let's add them to our list of superseded updates. Before I walk through the final two metadata tabs, let's save the changes we've made up to this point. Periodically saving your changes is considered a best practice. You should save your work if you need to exit the update editor before finishing your edits or if you want to perform a review before publishing the changes. To save your changes, you simply click the Save button. Any changes you've made are reviewed by the program and checked for errors. You will not be able to save the file if any errors are found. In this case, I didn't receive any errors, so my changes must be OK. With my changes saved, Let's exit the editor. To retrieve your changes, select the correct update, restart the editor, and then click Open. Locate your saved file and then click Open. The saved version of the update will now be loaded into the editor. Note that an error will occur if you attempt to load an edited version of the wrong update. The last change I made before saving was on the Superseded Updates tab. Let me go back to that tab to verify that the change is still in place. Sure enough, the Superseded Updates that I added are still in place. Let's finish up by talking about the Installable Rules tab and the Installed Rules tab. These two tabs allow you to edit the rules used to determine if an update is applicable to a target machine and if an update is currently installed on a target machine. The rules can be edited for MSI and EXE updates, but not for MSP updates. As you can see, both tabs contain the exact same editing tools, and the editing process is the same on both tabs. If you want, you can edit the rules directly within this editor. Another option, however, 
is to use this button to copy the existing rules to your computer's clipboard. This enables you to use a more powerful external XML editor if you prefer. When you have finished with your edits, you can copy the edited rules from your external editor back to your clipboard and then use this button to paste the edited rules here. You can also check your edits to make sure the updated rules contain well-formed XML. For example, let me purposely introduce an error into the rules. When I click the Syntax Checker button, the editor will tell me that there is an error, and it will also tell me where that error is located. Let's get rid of the error and then double check to make sure that everything is okay. And that wraps up our discussion on the tabs that you use to make metadata edits to an update. For information on using the Custom Installation Script tab, which is used to insert Windows batch file commands into an installation script, please view the related video. For more information about Shivelik Patch, go to the web URL shown here. These two web pages contain additional video tutorials as well as a number of Shavlik Patch user guides. Thanks for watching.